Hello, my fellow fiber fairies. We're here for another podcast with all of your transitional knits. My transitional knits, not yours. They could be yours if you knit them. I've decided that I've got a lot of pieces that could actually be taken as either spring or autumn or both if you don't subscribe to any particular colour palette when it comes to seasonality. Like what I'm wearing right now, which is the Snake Folks Nude by Eddie and Co. And sweater number 11 by my favourite friends, no, favourite things that wear, which was knitted for me by my Nana. What do you reckon this is? Do you reckon it's autumn or spring? Like what would this outfit be? I feel like it could be either, you know? So, I had originally wanted to do two separate videos. One more spring photo focused and one more autumn focused. Uh, but I thought, you know what, let's do it all at once. When the spirit moves me, which it has today, surprisingly, I was suddenly just like, right, time to film now. So here we are. I'm drinking some sav and some coconut water mm. and I also want to show you guys today some um, antiques that I got from just one of those antique fairs that they sometimes do um, once a month or so I went to one of those recently and yeah got a, got a, a lot of stuff for storing knitting notions and yeah the like and also some other crafty notion related things. Mm, yeah. So, what to start with? Should I have you can you see some outfit on that? Okay, well I'm just gonna grab shit. You know how we proceed here. Uh, it's gonna be random, it's gonna be chaotic. But hopefully, <laughs> uh, I'll see you on the other side. Anyway, let's begin. This is a chunky crochet handbag. You didn't expect that, did you? It is uh, the sister to this chunky crochet handbag that I made. So this is this is kind of an autumn look, I think, to me. Or maybe without. Well, you can kind of do the both of them together. Whereas if you made the same thing, you could do it, uh, but you wanted more of a spring look. You can do the purple, like that. Uh, so this is just a self-drafted pattern. Um, I can do like, I don't know, a pattern or something for it. If you guys want one, let me know completely unrelated to most of the other stuff I make but I, I love this uh, because it's so quick to do and it's so easy to adjust it to whatever size you want or whatever strap length you want um, or strap size so it's, it's, it's very easy I've, I'm sure I've explained it in one of my previous videos you pretty much just uh, crochet a rectangle which you then fold in half to create this shape and then you uh, from where you've finished the last row you then only crochet across three or however wide you want the strap to be before turning and then you just crochet um oh actually oh no I've done I've done Uh, and you connect it to the same side ag again and then you go and you do a I think it's a blanket stitch like when you s sew two crochet blanket squares together do that stitch to sew these two pieces together and you get that lovely edging which I didn't you can see I didn't quite manage to get it on this one so this is like the new improved version although I got it on one side yeah new and improved 
Uh, and then, yeah, you just get to the end, cut that off, and do the same thing again on the other side. If you want me to write that down or have questions, please feel free to ask. Oh, I should not have clapped that. I'll have to edit that loud noise because it will be loud. Okay. Now I have a lot of abandoned work, well, not abandoned, um, I just have a lot of whips, a lot of things to get to. I'm thinking of not doing gift knits this Christmas because I just want to knit for myself. I think, I, but I still want to craft, like make things for people, so I might do pottery or something on, instead where it's like you spend a couple of hours making a, a bowl and a cup, for instance. Uh, not that... Well, I suppose a lot of us are restricted on the amount of free time we have and I still want to put care and thought into the gifts that I want to give people. Uh, and I love the idea of making for them. Um, but knitting an entire jersey on like three millimeter needles or something. I'm only ever going to do that for me and for my partner. <laughs> That's it. But I'll quite happily crochet someone a um, chunky knit bag. Oh, I also did a uh, chunky knit bag. Much the same concept. Um, just you, you knit that same... Rather than crocheting, obviously. Anyway. So this is another piece that would go well with either a spring or autumn knitted wardrobe. It's the spring sorrel and I'm doing a um, modified version where I've tried to split and make a keyhole in the front panel. So it's currently on um, a stitch holder because I took it off, tried it on and the back is too tight. So I need to rip back I think like three rows and then cast on more stitches on the back panel but in these in-between um, pearl sections so just to make the back a little bit wider uh, and then I'm going to come in here and do an eye cord edging maybe a little eye cord strap because this is a folded over collar I did a folded over collar instead uh, by the way this is ethical silk by um, yarn 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 yarns the ethical yarn company that's based in uh, UK. Uh, their ethical silk, which is a silk where the silkworms are allowed to hatch and not die, and then the cocoons are just harvested once they've been allowed to do that. As well as a random mohair that I got off Trade Me. So yeah, this will be the spring sorrel. Another great um, piece for either spring or autumn, especially in these, like this uh, creamy colour, this natural light colour, because you could pair this with, with more browns, like this here, this is some yarn that I got from Trade Me, someone had purchased this, uh, it was from Chile. Uh, so it's a nice hand spun alpaca so imagine a jersey made out of this over top of the spring sorrel that could be quite an autumn look for instance or what would be more spring Ooh. This is <laughs> currently being stored in the same bowl, whip bowl. This is uh, the Can you see that? 
This is Hand Dyed Silk and Merino by Happy Go Nitty, yarn dyer based in New Zealand. Uh, it's a four ply that I've knitted on three millimeter needles. I started doing a back panel for what is going to be a tank top with a pointed ellipse cut out here. Oh my gosh, imagine that underneath this. Like a little cami. But it, it, it's high neck, so it pokes through the spring sorrel. Huh. But then there's a cutout there. See, this is good. Now I'm getting inspired to finish these things. All my mountains of webs. It's been a while since I since I recorded. I like doing it kind of all, all at once and just doing it seasonally. It's a good way that I like to do it for now. Posting, I think. But that might change. Uh, you can probably expect more posting from me uh, in the in the near future. And also an expansion into other crafts and um, I'll post it in like separate playlists or something maybe but I intend to branch out into other uh, forms of fashion like how some knitters also do their sewing stuff similar to that but more materials based. Oh you, you'll see what I mean you'll see what I mean. So anyway, yeah, spring sorrel in a neutral colour, good for either a spring wardrobe or an autumn wardrobe. As well as this. This is my Fuyuhi sweater. I will... Uh, I can't remember the name of the designer. Sorry. I did the size one. I'll put it on for you. Oof. Oh, and this is my um by Naked Knit the shell bra, and the and, and this is knitted in the uh, New Zealand Kauri. It's New New Zealand Zilana. Oh my gosh, words. Anyway. It's in there like possum. It's a possum merino mix, New Zealand company. And so is the the white in this collar. Oh, that was cold. <laughs> but that, I'm um, sorry, that shell bra is also a good spring or autumn piece. Because uh, just have, I like to just wear my jerseys next to skin, pretty much all of them. So it's nice just having a cozy bra on like the one that's made out of the um possum merino alpaca blend by new zealand new zealander never mind <laughs> uh by that yarn company So what I was saying about the collar is this is also in a, a New Zealand yarn blend, which is Polwarth and Polwarth. So he say it, ten percent Polwarth, and then the rest is alpaca. It's from Skeins NZ. I bought that off Trade Me. The uh, blue and brown variegated yarn is. Oh, I, I want to say dust clouds. No dust storm anyway it's by purple sprouting um it's her polwarth fiber and then the green is by eden cottage yarns a yarn i purchased from trade me uh in the colorway lichen i don't think she does it anymore so it's quite cropped um, because I wanted, I wanted to save some of the green for another project that I have. And the, 
I did long tail, sorry, the su surprisingly stretchy bind off. And, oh, it looks really bad on camera. Um, I think I might just rip it back, knit a little bit more because they're a little bit short, and just do like a regular bind off. Or do alternate every other for a yarn over in between the bind off. Because it also, because it's quite cropped and the sleeves are quite short, the wind can get in quite easily as well. And I have blocked it and I did stretch it out quite a bit. Uh, so maybe I'll just block it again, make it a little bit bigger. Uh, yeah, but I probably could have gone with a size 2, although I am happy because, <laughs> oh, I'm so bad at this, but playing yarn chicken effectively or knitting a size too small because I'm like oh no I didn't want to save the yarn but I really want to knit um yeah this other thing in this yarn sweater number 15 by my favorite things not where I think that's what I'm talking about so this I think could quite easily be either spring or autumn anyway what else do I I have so much to show you where do I even start this is one that I'm just cast on which seems ridiculous seeing how much I've got going on but I couldn't help myself because I brought this hand spun yarn from trade me good old tray me like you know delivering uh it's the snowy forest by midori huros it's these big cables and then this like little cable pattern in between oh and that there's a stitch marker that i made it's a shell <laughs> It's quite, quite bulky. Um, here's some of the other ones. Oh, <laughs> oh no! My stitch markers just went everywhere. You can't really see that. Anyway, I um, saw that there was some cool stitch markers online that were carved out of shells and I was like, yo, I could totally do that. And so I went and bought like a Dremel tool, which was I just got from Mida 10. And I'm surprised that I actually used it. But I like that they kind of look like guitar picks, although when I was knitting with it, I got annoyed with it. So I made a bunch and like uh, made them perfectly round, which are probably a bit nicer to knit with. But I also like, yeah, I've already broken one. <laughs> yeah, they're very fragile, so. Me plus fragile doesn't really work. As evidence suggests. Anyway, so this will be my snowy forest. Yarn is hand spun from a woman on Trade Me. I think it's gonna be so cozy. This would be a great winter uh, jersey as well, especially if you knit it in a very woolly wool, which I think would look quite good in. This is an alpaca merino mix, I think, or an alpaca silk mix. No, I don't know. It's incredibly soft and lovely. Uh. This one's special. I, um, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen all of this already, actually, but you would have also seen a story that I did about an off shop find. Uh, I found, oh, let me just, why is it everywhere? 
I bought this in an op shop, second hand store for those of you who don't know what an op shop is. Uh, it's someone's partially completed jersey. I'll show you the pattern. I paid $30 for this. Which you may think, like, that's a lot for a jersey at an op shop, but it'll be like hundreds of dollars worth of yarn. It's like a vintage New Zealand yarn. Apparently this is all you really had to choose from at a point in time. This is the pattern, which reminds me a bit of um, the pattern that Petit Knit is releasing. I think it's the Moby sweater. Um, and it's partially completed, like, here's a sleeve. I only have, like, that much left to go to finish it. Here's the other sleeve. Oh, did I mention it's in my size? Like, such a deal. This is the back panel. Isn't that insane? Like someone put so much effort into this. Oh, I've been putting off working on it, but I want to work on it like immediately. Also just doing all the like cream colors right now. But how great. So yeah, I just have a few more rows on each of the sleeves to complete and then I need to sew it together and then that will be done. So it's not a lot to do. Um, I just need to do it. Maybe it's because it's knit flat and I just immediately go, oh, sorry. I just immediately go, oh, no, no, no. And then reach for something in the round. But at the end of the day, I actually like purling. So I don't know why I have an issue with working flat. Imagine doing this in like a green. That would be so autumn -y. But this is Camisole number eight by My Favourite Things Knitwear. I'm I'm doing a knit along with Stitch with Brie. Uh I'm just really behind <laughs> on Yeah, I, w I need to work on this. But I've decided that uh I want to, like, when it's still cold enough to knit with the woolly things, I want to still knit with the woolly things, and I want to save, like, the beautiful silks and silk merinos, merinos, cottons, for when it does get hotter, and I don't want to touch the woolly stuff, so I've decided to knit according to what I feel like knitting, rather than trying to pre-prepare summer clothes before summer. I'd rather knit summer clothes during summer, wear the summer clothes that I made last summer and the ones that I make as I produce them during the summer. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, I also started this. It's gonna be like, there's a little video of it on my Instagram. Uh, it's gonna be a stripy jersey. I wanna look like a toffee when I wear it. I want to look delicious with the caramel and the cream. And I'm taking inspiration from the uh, unlucky jumper that Unlucky Knits made. It's her free jumper and she did a version of it in red and white stripes and that's the type of striping like thickness that I'm going for. Alright. Oh, no! Whip's on the run! Excuse me while I arrange myself.
I do not want to show you guys this. But I will. I'm trying to make an oversized vest and I did it too well. <laughs> it's massive. I haven't done any of the neck or armband because I don't know if, whether I want to keep it, this or not. It's funny because when I put this on it actually it looks like a dress and it's kind of cute as a dress but I started a bit of ribbing at the bottom and that just made it way longer than it needed to be. Like the armholes are also too big. I was going for that like, you know, super oversized vest but like that's too much. That's almost down to, that's at my hip. So it's also barely a dress. I'm doing that thing again when I make it out myself and don't follow a pattern and have to deal with the consequences of myself. working on a couple of the major fall uh, items. I did the bulk order where you like would buy two of the ocean knits made you fall selection and then get the third for free. Uh, and so this one here that I'm working on is by Rock the yarn is by Roxy Fibers. This is the made you fall blouse. And I want to do it right long sleeve. This is in her smooch yarn, which is a mix of alpaca and silk, and it is the softest thing I've ever touched. And I'm gonna see if she can um, make me a little bit more because I want the sleeves to be long sleeved. Although if I did it short sleeve, that'd be so cute in that same amount of yarn that I have, and then I don't have to buy more yarn. That could be potentially in a different colorway. But it would also look really cute long sleeved. If it's alpaca, then I'll probably want to wear it when it's more cold. So I should probably make a long sleeve version. Yeah. Or if I do a short sleeve version, then I can just opt for having long gloves or no long gloves. Where's my demonstratory glove? Here it is. Like if I get a bit too cold with this cotton alpaca, I just chuck on a glove that goes halfway up my arm. And then it's like I've got a second sleeve, so a bit of extra warmth. And then you've got like a jersey on over top of something, plus if you've only got a short sleeve there, then you've reduced it from like this whole part of your limb to only this part that's exposed and it's not the extremity the extremity is the thing to keep warm that was a tangent wow where did I put my water bottle thank you for your patience thank you for your patience Okay, I'm gonna quickly go through this bag, show you guys the shit in here, and then I'm gonna go and f get some more wine. But while I'm buried in the whips, this is by Tasiba Yarns. It's a self drafted pattern. Don't know what I'm doing with it. Might rip it back and turn it into a champagne cardigan, how double with um, a white mohair. Actually, I've got like three other balls of this that I was gonna start with. To make the um oh I can see a rabbit, hello. Uh I was gonna start with those because I wanted to see if I could <laughs> only use three four 
100 grams of yarn to make the champagne cardigan or there's a cardigan by, by my favorite things knitwear that i was thinking of doing as well and sorry that would be this yarn held to double with the mohair um so i don't want to keep working on this design until i know that i'm not going to need this yarn to complete that thanks if you stayed with me through trying to explain that i think that was that was painful for me was that painful for you anyway Oh, this is going to be like a desert crop top. Like little. I went to uh, just like a one of those kind of antique collection fairs and there was someone selling yarn. Just, you know, one of those random, why do I call it a fair, like a market, the antique market. Anyway, I bought this yarn from her. It's a wild silk. Linen blend, I think. This is also a self drafted pattern, we'll see how we go. I'm just doing increases equally distributed around the neckline and um oh. Yeah, just changing the number of increases with each increase round. And this is the progress on my uh, slanting slipover, which this is what I've been working on most recently. I want to get this finished. Again, I think this could be either a spring or autumn knit. I struggled with this pattern. I did not like the way it was written. But I love the way the garment has turned out, even though it's full of all of my mistakes that I made because I cast this on, like, at the beginning of this year when I just started knitting again. But, like, learning new techniques and stuff, not just knitting a scarf, knitting again. So I'm so close to finishing this. I thought I didn't need any more yarn, but I'm going to have to go get some more. It's the Snafug Snood, what? Snafug Snood. Snafnug? Snafnug? by uh, Kama Rosie, which is also this same yarn, as well as this. So I'm gonna have to get another ball of this to finish it off. But then, with these three yarns combined, I'll be able to make like a vest or something. With Because I have scrap yarn from this, and from this, and then I'll have a heap from this. So it'll be, I'm gonna have so many micro vests. Or I could add more yarns to it and make it a bigger vest. Because I do have a lot of scrap yarns. Okay, break. So the same woman who hand spun the yarn that I'm using for my snowy forest. I also purchased some yarn from her. This lovely brown shade it's so nice and squishy I've got like 200 and something grams of this stuff I had cast on like a little collar just wanting to make some type of crew neck jersey but I keep forgetting that my knitted, my passion drafting expertise uh, is still limited and I still need to build it up before I just start launching into random projects. Because it does still take some brain work and a lot of the time I just want to follow a passion. So I think once I find... I did quite enjoy knitting the uh, Hans Thom sweater by Petit Knit. Uh, but then I don't think that that one would work with some of the chunkier yarns that I want to work with like this like this is at least an 8 ply like an 8 10 ply so I'll probably end up ripping this back and making something else uh, yeah or maybe a crew neck 
slip over on this. And then this is the other um, made you fall. Well, one of them <laughs> that I'm working on at the moment. This is going to be a dress. So this is in uh, Chaska Muhu Chunky. Ribbon Rose had a sale on this yarn. And so I got some. Uh, so this will be a great garment, I think. For, probably also for winter. Uh, depending on what fibre you use. But definitely a great transitional season piece too. Oh, and then me and my friends went to Sigur Ross in Auckland and uh, me and my bandmates. And while we were up there, I brought this yarn. It's a uh, Malibro. I can't remember the name. Oh, oh, this looks actually nice. Well, this is a self-drafted pattern that's inspired by um, the, the River Tea. So I used the increases from the river tea to there, but I split it open and then I also do decreases at the front, like knitting it flat and make a keyhole. And so I knitted too much on this though. I need to take the shoulders back and then start knitting the sleeves like it's too oversized, which is the same mistake that I made when I made this thing, which was also based on the river tea construction. Because I really just like that um, that band that then splays out into the sleeve. I really like that. Uh, but for this one as well, like I knitted this too long and so it, there's too much fabric on this. And I'm not sure what to do with it. I had knit all the way down to here, folded it over and put a ribbon through it. So I can cinch it, but it's still too long. So it's like, if I connect it to a skirt, then it will become a full garment. So connecting this back panel to the back of the skirt. I am knitting a red skirt, so it could work. I mentioned that in my previous podcast. That red skirt, so... Could be something there. Yeah. Just trying to work with the mistakes and... <laughs> Not against them, I suppose. Yeah, so a lot of these whips have been put aside because it, it required me to frog back a bit and retry. Which is a block for me. <laughs> so when I uh, get over that block, then I'll be able to get back into some of these. But I'm glad that I'm getting this one done because I've had this one on the go for a very long time. I've had this yarn for a very long time. I think this is one of the first like more luxury fibers that I bought for myself. Yeah, I want to finish that, but I'm going to have to go buy more wool. Oh, those 50 gram balls do not go far. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh my gosh, I haven't shown you guys this yet. This is my look at my holes. It is knitted in yarn by Nana Cindy. A UV reactive yarn held together with a variegated yarn. The variegated was um, Surrey Alpaca and the uh, UV reactive pink was a mohair, silk mohair. I made a dress version. Maybe I'll put up a photo of me wearing it. Um, I still haven't figured out what I want to wear underneath it. Like if I want something that's also pink or something that's a dark color or whether I want um, See that? This is this looks so weird with the jersey underneath. <laughs> eh. But it's such a lovely pattern, very uh, straightforward, very well explained, 
very size inclusive. This is the size large. Uh, on size seven millimeter needles, like the um, the version that Igna, Igna, from uh, Knitting Traditions, she used seven millimeter needles. I followed what she did. Uh, I can't remember what size she knit, but missed the ribbing sections on the top of the garment and at the sleeves and at the bottom hem which Heather and Hops uh, did that initially who else inspired me with their I think it was Heather and Hops and Knitting Traditions Kat from Heather and Hops and Knitting Igna from Knitting Traditions yeah their look at my holes are the ones where I was like I need to <laughs> finish one of these so I'm also making another one into a dress and I'm using the Spring Fever Merino by Purple Sprouting. Um, where, is it? where did it go? Oh, it looks a bit bad with this in the background. It's quite an intense colour, which I do love and I'm, I'm so excited for it to glow in the dark. I just need to find the right things to wear with it though. And I think this would look so cool. I would knit this a size bigger. Actually two sizes bigger. I wanted it to be a bit more oversized than it is on me. Just because it's quite... Like it's more figure hug hugging near the bottom. So I want to make it like... But maybe if I block it it might grow a little bit. Anyway. Uh, this is the other look at my holes that I'm doing. Sorry. That's what I was saying. Uh, you could do this dress in like a white mohair or in a black mohair. Oh, it would be such a good layering piece and like going... I'm intending to use this out clubbing. UV reactive yarn seems like the right thing to use it for. Uh, and... It's going to be great for like... Transitioning from cold outside temperatures to much warmer inside temperatures but this is the other look at my holes that I'm doing that has has the ribbing so I've cinched the waist in on this one and then I'm going to now I need to start doing increases to go over my hips and this is the spring fever merino yarn by purple sprouting Okay, my phone is about to die, so I'm going to have to wrap it up. Uh, I think I'll talk about like plans and stuff in another video. But yeah, I just wanted to catch you guys up on what I've been making. This is the last project I'll show you. This is uh, knitted with a silk and viscose yarn that I purchased from Towering and Knitting Centre and I'm gonna knit this into a dress that sorry where are we oh my gosh I should do a cutout on this dress but this is the collar and I'm just knitting the panels to go over the armholes I want this to be really drapey and as you can see the, the fabric is really drapey this is a whip that I'm saving for when the weather gets really warm because this will be quite nice to knit then. As you can see, it's very rumpled and has been in my bag for a long time. I knit, I purchased the yarn when it was on sale. Uh, maybe in like March. So the weather's been cold, which has mean, meant I've wanted to knit with all the alpacas and merinos and other warmer yarns. So saving this one for when I don't want to work with those anymore. Uh, but I hope that oh my cat is in the garden digging shit up. Okay. One one last thing. One last thing. I wanted to knit that little like vest in this green. It'd be like a V, and then a straight band across here. 
Put that in this. And then wear it with this. And with whatever I create with this right here. Which I could also pair with some of the UV reactive mo here. So there's one plan for you. Oh, and I was going to show you some uh, of the Notion storage things I got. This, oh shit. Okay, we'll keep it on the plate. This here is for uh, doing floral arrangements. It's a glass little stem holder that sits in the bottom of a vase. Uh, and I bought this from the antique fair. I think I paid like 10 bucks. They had a, there was a, a few of them at different stalls too. It was the retro fair actually. Yeah. Uh, that was on in Claudelands. So this has been a great place to store my crochet hooks, my interchangeable knitting needle tips. Uh, I can even put some of my cables in there. Hello, Gingies. So that's one that I'll show you. And then another one is this beautiful wooden shell box. It is a, uh, so I've got some notions in there. It is a music box. See, it's got the little, the little. Oh, ginger. I don't want to turn it the wrong way, so I just don't turn it. <laughs> Anxiety one, Taylor zero. No. Ooh. Taylor has like three. He's trying to stand on my very overcrowded table. Anyway, um, this is probably my cue to go feed this little monster. Um, <laughs> thank you for this uh, sticking around for this very hectic knitting podcast. I hope that you were able to find something that you might want to knit up yourself. Let me know in the comments uh, if you're going to start any of those projects. I'd love to see what you do. Uh, and yeah. Enjoy your nuts. Bye.